today on Behind the Scenes. We're celebrating Christmas at the sewer treatment plant. Do you give friends? <laughs> <laughs> Chambers Creek Regional Wastewater Treatment Plant upgrade was completed in 2017, and it is the largest project ever undertaken by Pierce County. The massive improvement allows us to treat 45 million gallons of, well, the stinky stuff every day. Sewer Utility Project Manager Steve Shanfrau is giving us a behind the scenes look at a place you probably never wanted to visit, let alone smell. Let's all plug our noses and see what it takes to get this job done. This is called the head box. What does it do? That's where all the flow comes into, and then it gets split into channels that goes over there. This? Yes. Everything goes through here? Everything goes into there. It's like a big manhole where okay. all the flow comes into, and then we have other gates in there that open them up and put them into the channels that go into the headworks. I actually fought for a Smell-O-Vision episode, but got shot down. But we do have the next best thing, a stinkometer, so you can enjoy the experience along with us. So what have we here? This is what we call the Headworks building. This is our first step in trying to separate the solids and the wastewater from the water. So this is like baby wipes, yes, uh, uh, dental floss. Yes, and as you can see, when people talk about flushable wipes, they're, they're not flushable. So why do they advertise them as flushable? Because they can be flushed. They don't clog their pipes, right. they clog our pipes. Yes. Yeah. So how does it get out of this? You'll see that it moves, it just moves and moves and moves and gets dumped on the other side. Wow, and I don't know why you call it the headworks, it ought to be the bottom box first. So this is where you could come to find your math test? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that you inadvertently just fucked. <laughs> so how many thousands of gallons are going through these three channels? Uh, these three channels on a day like today were probably around 20 million gallons a day, 20, 21 million gallons a day. Thanksgiving is always our largest flow day of the year, every year. Really? Yes. Who knew? You can think of the plant in stages, each having its own job as the water continues down the line to get treated. This is one of the first treatment plants in the nation to utilize new bacteria to make for a more efficient cleaning process. So as we leave the Headworks building, the flow then comes into what we call the primary settling tanks. Every step of the process is just an, another level of separating solids from water. The first one was screening, the next one is settling. This year you can see how slowly the flow is moving through here and what that does is it allows heavy solids to sink and light solids to float. Sinkers and floaters. The sinkers... <laughs> it just it kills me. <laughs> the sinkers we call sludge, the floaters we call scum. And within these basins we have these skimmers that go through the top of the water and then down to the bottom of the water they push the scum off into a channel that goes to our digesters. So is it kind of like rubbing your head and your stomach it's at the same like time? Because yes. it's one going. It just, it just, it just go, it's on one chain that goes like this. Are these always covered? They are always covered for the most part now. We added these covers as part of the expansion um, in order to control odors. Uh, you can see all the white piping. That's all collecting all of the odors and the methane gas that is being created here okay. and sending them through carbon towers before that is released into the air. This isn't one of the primary tanks. What this does is it just separates the water into the channels. It's gonna go on to what we call the aeration basins. Okay. This now is where the part starts where we start the biological treatment process. Okay. As we grow certain microorganisms to eat the food that is in the wastewater. When you say food, are we talking like that went through the garbage disposal or? No, I'm talking about literally... food to them. So we have your basic fishing pole here? Yeah, you don't want to eat anything that you get out of there. Yeah, I'm just gonna say. Mostly brown trout. The foam, that's actually a microorganism. When you see this much foam, you know that there's some kind of upset going on. 
We talked earlier about the solids being sent over to the digesters. These round structures over here are the digesters. The microorganisms expire methane gas. Okay. We capture that and we use it to run the boilers for the entire site and we use it to run our fertilizer manufacturing facility. And that saves us about $15,000 a month in natural gas costs. It says caution hot. This is part of the expansion. These are new aeration tanks. All the white things you see in there are diffusers. So we have these very large blowers underground that force air up through here, and that's how air is added into the wastewater so that the bugs can grow and multiply and feed. All of the plant operations are supervised from a control station, providing readouts and measurements of every tube and tank on the property, diverting flow and equipment utilization where needed. This allows them to keep the plant running in optimal condition. We're going to head down into the pipe galleries. From everything that you see up top, there's almost as much going on underground. All the concrete walls that you're seeing around you are actually the tanks that we saw outside. So beyond these walls is where the aeration basins are. Everything is very specifically color-coded and also labeled. If there is a problem in the system or if something's going, we know exactly where it's going, coming from and where it's going to. Holy Toledo. You'll see these types of labels on everything. We know where every single one of these things are. We know when they're gonna to have to be replaced. We know what their maintenance cycle is. We know where they're going and where they're coming from. Would you like a drink? Wow. Where's it coming from? I don't know. So now we have all the controls that you don't want me to touch? No, I do not want you to touch any of the controls. <laughs> You can see here that the water is probably as clean as any mountain stream. It still has pathogens in it that need to be removed by the ultraviolet uh, system that we'll go to next. And is but that can, the last step? And that's the last step before it gets sent out to the sound. These sprayers, do they look like they're doing something they're really Bird they're, control. They're, it's really just bird control, <laughs> yes. At this point, we've done all the separating and the water is as clean as it's going to get, except for those microscopic pathogens that were not able to be removed either by the mechanical process or by the biological process. Okay. Aaron. <laughs> Here you go. Got to get the fish out of there. If you look this way. You see through there? Oh yeah. So this water is flowing through, right. being hit by ultraviolet light. Right. So this is the last part of the process. The water has been cleaned, the solids have been taken out, it's been filtered, it's been... So this will kill all the pathogens? This will kill all the pathogens. So there's thousands of ultraviolet bulbs in here that actually, eventually they have to be replaced, just like any bulb in your home. At some point we test yes. what's going what's out going before out, it goes and out? Just before it goes out, goes out to our outfall and is discharged out into the sand. Right. It was great to discover that the plant has their own team of scientists studying water quality around the clock and at every stage of the process. Now we're in our certified lab here on site. We have our own lab. We don't have to send any of our uh, samples off site to be tested. Um, we, we sample in order to report to the state that we're doing our job correctly. Uh, we sample so that we can test to make sure our equipment is measuring uh, things correctly and that we also test to make sure that our process is proceeding the way that we think it is going. I want to thank Steve and all the hard-working people in the sewer division who do the work most of us don't want to. Pierce County is projected to be home to a million people in the next 20 years. So we've built this plant before they come. So frankly, we can continue to do our business.